It's a Jaguar XK8 2000 model. Sometimes I start it and it cranks right up and starts and looks fine. It runs fine. And this time right here it did. Now this next time. Now you see that this thing has a fail safe engine mode and it has a check engine light on. It's just a random. I can be driving down the road running 80 and push the gas and all of a sudden or hit a bump and it'll go to fail safe and lose power and put me in a position where I'm driving down the highway running 80 like I said and all of a sudden this thing loses power <clears throat> and I've got to try to get out of people's way and it has put me in a dangerous spot more than one time and it's very 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 frustrating so I did some research online I found a company on eBay which I'll reference uh, later that claims that if I pull my throttle body off and send it to them they can rebuild it and I can put it back on so we're going to see how that goes so here I'm going to show you, uh, and not doing it step by step, just kind of an overview, uh, me pulling the throttle body off, and then I package it up and I send it to a company in East Tennessee. I'm in Nashville. This company's in East Tennessee, and we'll talk about how that worked out and what I had to do to complete the job. The thing that you would do before you even start this job is you would unhook your battery cable. I unhook the ground side of it, 10 millimeter wrench, just unhook it, push it over to the side where it cannot come back and touch before you ever start taking the car apart. Because you don't want anybody trying to start it or do anything like that with the throttle body off. All right, so to remove it, I cut the pull tie that's right here and just pulled this around and was able to unthread it. That basically just sticks up in there. I pulled the screw out this here. I pulled the screw out this there and you can see there's a little a little metal thing that goes right there so i'm gonna put it over on the edge there's two eight millimeter screws there now it looks like 10 millimeter or 12 i think it's 10 11 down in here it looks like there's four of them one here one here one here one here all right so i've got the throttle body off and the way i did it was there's four 10 millimeter 10 millimeter screws that go here and here and here and that's what the gasket looks like you got this plug right here for the pedal position sensor this plug here is for the, I think this is would be considered an idle motor, an IAC motor. Then you've got an airline here that goes to the um, crankcase vent system. And basically the way you get it off of there is you just squeeze this and, and it releases the edge. You got a, a antifreeze line here and here. And what I did was use 30 amp fuses to plug it. I'm a spa guy, I do hot tubs, so I have plenty of these. So I plug those two lines. On the other side, I unplugged the throttle position sensor and this is some other sensor it may be part of the throttle position sensor or part of the idle uh, part of it but you can see that that's I've got the entire throttle body off and the numbers that they're looking for are on the back of the throttle body which would be uh, towards the front of the motor but it's just a lot easier to read when they're out so I'm gonna ship this to them to be rebuilt and I will let you know what happens uh, how this turns out so you can do yours with confidence as well. So I want to talk about the number on the throttle body. You can see mine ends with AD and uh, when I talk to them about it, uh, their, their eBay thing does not show AD and they said, oh, we can't have every number on there. So don't worry about that. I see what it is. These sensor wires are actually what opens the throttle. This is the power wires. There's a servo in here that opens the throttle. This is all fly-by wire. No cables dangerous I think all right so I shipped my throttle body I packaged it up really nice and I shipped it to a company called automotive scientific Inc 5168 highway 11 West Rogersville Tennessee 37857 their phone number is 423-921-9085 I have nothing to do with this company other than I wanted to let other people know about it it took a lot of research to figure out what to do it did save me a lot of money but I did have issues. I called in. They were not very helpful, but I can save you some time and help and get you help you to bypass some of the trouble things and help you to understand what to do to get yours to run right. And uh, going after this is what I did to kind of solve it. All right, so I got my throttle body back, and this is how it came packaged. It came in this box right here from the name of the company automotive scientific and you know I sent it off on eBay and this is what it looked like when it came back and so I'm gonna go put it back on the car looks like it's been 
cleaned up and they've worked on you can see this is the pedal sensor and they've worked on that and there are the throttle position sensor and this is the pedal position sensor and it looks like they've done stuff here so hopefully this thing's good it looks clean inside the throttle all that's clean in there so i'm gonna go put it back on the car all right so i put the throttle body back on but this thing is is doing some pretty crazy stuff i don't have my foot on the gas at all and it's accelerating no foot my foot not on the gas at all and I'm accelerating 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 I don't know you can see it's trying to run away you can hear it I'm just taking my foot off I'm not pushing the gas at all and it's doing that much right there without me even gassing it I'm gonna pull off and turn the key off for a moment. Putting it in neutral. So I can hardly hold it back with the brake. It's idling there. No foot on the brake. Or no foot on the gas, I should say. So part of what I thought was gonna happen is one of the reasons I've got enough sense to put a throttle position sensor on a throttle body, it's very simple. And what I thought they would do was pre-calibrate this thing and make it work uh, where all I did was bolted it on and it's correct. So I thought maybe then, okay, well, I'm gonna go back and find the paperwork. Maybe I've just missed the paperwork and there were some instructions in there and I could pull it out and check and see. So this right here is what happened when I found my paperwork. So the paperwork was under this. So I'm gonna see what it says. Showing automotive scientific. say anything about about it so I'm gonna have to do some research so their answer is uh, the paperwork said nothing hey, well, I don't um, I figured it would have some sort of instructions so I called the number and here I called the local number I'll give you the 800 number 1-866-983-6688 young man named Will uh, actually had to call me back they said he wasn't at his desk and he was very nonchalant, like, okay, well, did you replace the gasket? And I'm like, uh, no, it's a metal gasket. The metal gasket, how can it go bad? Well, you've got to do that or that's going to be an issue. So until you replace the gasket, there's nothing else to talk about. And I was like, okay, well, how am I supposed to? I said, I've sprayed with it around the gasket with a uh, carburetor cleaner and it did not raise the idle. So it's not leaking around the throttle body. So wrong answer, sorry, that's not it. What else can I do? Oh, well just adjust it hard to the left and that'll fix it. So I got out and experimented with it and here's what happened. All right, so you saw where I put the throttle body on. It was doing crazy stuff. I called in and talked to a guy named Will at extension 411. He said to loosen the two screws and you can see where it was before I marked it. That was the edge of it with my magic marker. I marked it. He told me to go all the way furthest to the left and this is a five-sided tool he was also trying to tell me that we needed to replace the gasket for sure that it would suck air but i sprayed carburetor cleaner around it it did not suck air but my argument to him was if you've got to have that for this to be successful how about sending a gasket with it you know we paid three hundred dollars and uh sent us a three dollar gasket or ten dollar whatever it is if it's required to do this job the other thing is is this is a five-sided star type tool not a six-sided star tool so he told me to take a t25 and beat it in there and use that that's what they used to use till they got the correct thing so what i say is if you have to adjust this then they need to, to throw a little bit in there that fits this would be the correct thing to do so i'm gonna 
uh, do a hard reset. So basically undo the battery, hook it back up and see what happens. So this is how you do your hard reset. I undid the battery. And so I'm doing another hard reset. I'm adjusting it. So here we go. Let's see what she does. All right, so I adjusted it far left. It went to about 5,000 RPMs and hovered. So I adjusted it to the right. Now you can see it saying fail safe engine mode still and it's real low idle. So I'm close. I'm gonna go a little bit further back to my left. So the original mark is just under this. And so this is too low idle. When I went all the way to the left, like they said, it's too high idle. So I'm gonna adjust it back just ever so slightly, just in front of where it was before. So behind this way, so I'm gonna go this way. That actually sounds pretty good. Still fail safe engine mode. Has a hesitation in the in the uh, gas. You can see that. I'm pushing it and it's not going. I'm gonna go a little bit to the right. All right, we've adjusted it again. Let's see what happens. It is not giving me a fail safe, which is a plus. And the way we adjusted this was uh, we had the car running even though it was in fail-safe mode and adjusted the throttle position sensor to listen to where it, the, where it sounded right. And uh, then of course redid the battery and put it back together. So we're going to put it back together and drive. So this is the position where mine was correct uh, or appears to be correct. I hadn't driven yet but it sounds a lot better and it's not fail-safe. All right, so I've got it adjusted, and this is the next day, and it is running like a champ. It's running better than it ever has. Used to, when I do that, it would go into fail-safe mode, and it is running good, idling good, and it is done. else I forgot to mention is my check engine light is off now it'll go off after a few times starting and I think maybe 10 or so so no check engine light no fail safe no nothing this thing is running like a champion so I hope this helps so finally after years of frustration I finally got it figured out now one thing is the way I undid the screws to adjust the throttle position sensors was just a simple pair of pliers and uh, I just simply unloosened both of them enough that I could adjust the sensor back and forth and it still be tight. I the answer was you start the car up, you adjust it, you listen to it, and you'll hear it when it idles correctly. And uh, as long as it's idling correctly and the fail safe uh, is not in place and it drives right, then you're done. After about 10 restarts, if you don't have a, a, a star te or a tester, uh, OBD2 tester to reset the uh, the check engine light it'll automatically go off if everything is correct runs better now than it ever has and I've had it for about five or six years and evidently has had this issue all along so guys uh, check out um, ladies and gentlemen check out automotive scientific you're gonna have to do more than your part but that's what this video is about so you know what part you have to do and it'll save you a whole bunch of time. The way that I found this was I happened to be looking for throttle position sensors on eBay and found that they supposedly rebuild these. A brand new throttle body with all these parts on it's about two grand. So I got out of this deal for a little over $300 and a little bit of frustration, but I hope this video helps and it's not as frustrating to you as it was to me. And happy Jaguar.